Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, here a while back, the folks over at TerraMaster uh, reached out and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at their uh, five bay uh, TerraMaster F5 221. In fact, we actually did a live stream on it uh, like the day after I got it, just so we can kind of take a look at the insides and kind of see how, kind of what it looks like around it, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's been a little while, it's been sitting, well, over, over, over there uh, on my desk, uh, and it's just been rocking and rolling, doing its thing. Right now it's only got two, two terabyte drives in it, but I figured that would be good enough for testing purposes anyway. Uh, anyway, with that said, what I wanted to do in this video is kind of talk about um, the, the software uh, that we can, well, there's, there's that. Uh, that's that's what we're going to take a look at here in just a moment. Um, and then kind of go through uh, some of the things that I really do like about the TerraMaster F5221. So uh, let's jump over and take a look at some of the software stuff first. So here we are on the login page for the F5221. Username and password are in there. I'm going to go ahead and click on log in. Oh, of course. So I'm actually glad this happened. I've had this screen up for a few minutes uh, while I was getting some other stuff set up in the background. And this is one of those little nitpicky things that bothers me, honestly. Um, so I sat on this page too long and tried to log in. Um, and it set a cookie for some reason. And then, then, then I, I, I don't know, like I wasn't logged in. I hadn't done anything here. I just sat on this page waiting to log in for too long and it timed me out. That's weird in my opinion. I hope they fix that eventually. So here we are on the dashboard for the TerraMaster F5221 uh, 5 bay NAS. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, I've got two two terabyte drives in here for the sake of testing, uh, just getting familiar with the device. Um, and, and I'm gonna be honest, when I when they first reached out and asked if I'd take a look at this device, my, my first thought was, well, okay, fine. Uh, this is this is this is a low powered device. It's got like two gigs of RAM on it, it's got an Intel Celeron processor. This thing's gonna be good for being a storage device and nothing more. So then <clears throat> I was like, well, let's let's do some digging around and let's look at this thing. And so the first thing I did was I threw, well, like I said, two terabyte or yeah, two, two terabyte drives in it. And then I was like, well, let's let's see if we can throw some or see how much RAM it's got in it. Let's throw some more RAM at it. So if we come over to here, <clears throat> um, here we can see that uh, it says it's got a maximum supported memory of six gigs. It has two gigs soldered onto the board. You're not changing that. That's permanent. However, it also says that you can only support up to four gigs in the other slot. Well, I did some research and uh, looking around online, I don't know if I call it research, I was looking around online and saw that other people had had better results than just four gigs. So uh, I threw an eight gig stick in it and uh, right here you can see that I've got 10 gigs of uh, memory in here. I'll leave links to all of this in the description down below. So once I got the the, the drives and the RAM and all that in it, um, and I got it all set up, I was like, okay, well, let's let's see what it can do. You know, for the last couple of years or so, I've been using uh, a Synology DS1621XS Plus with uh, a Xeon processor and like 38 terabytes of hard drive space and 32 gigs of RAM. And that thing is a beast. It's a powerhouse. But <clears throat> it is a Xeon processor that doesn't support Intel Quick Video Sync. And uh, the, Synology, or the Synology, the TerraMaster does. So if we come back over here uh, to their page, this has an Intel Celeron J3355 dual core processor that has a max burst of 2.5 gigahertz. And when I saw that, I was just, Nyeh. Whatever this thing again, it's going to be it's going to be an extra storage device, and it's just going to sit there and idle and be backup storage. And so, I was wrong. Let's just let's just cut to the chase. I was wrong. Um, so what I did was uh, I went to the applications uh, tab there, the button there, icon, whatever. Went to uh, recommended, and then installed both Plex and MB, and. Um, I was blown the hell away. Um, the Intel Quick Video Sync on the Celeron J3355, and, and of course across the, their, their whole lineup of supported CPUs, um, I wasn't expecting, uh, I, I wasn't ready to to process what had happened here. So once I got the uh, the media servers set up, I did I tested them individually, uh, and I ran some video through them. First I ran one video, and it was fine. It, it played, no issues, and I was, Honestly, I, again, I was shocked by that because my Synology doesn't even do that very well with a Xeon processor. Again, we're talking quick video sync versus not quick video sync. I was like, okay, so let's let's play a second stream and see what happens. And I've got two streams running uh, on, I, I believe it was Plex at the time. Um, and, and that seemed to work without issues. No hiccups, no lag, no, no stuttering, nothing. I was like, well, let's 
let's just go all in and let's start up a third stream. So here's the results of that. Okay, so here we've got uh, Leon the Professional. This is a 4K uh, MKV video uh, playing here on uh, the 4K TV in the bedroom. Uh, this is playing on Plex uh, from the TerraMaster um, and, and it looks great. Uh, there's, there's no lag or anything like that. Uh, so uh, what I find interesting about this, let's, uh, let's, let's switch this around just a little bit. If we come over to here, uh, I'm sure that's way too close. And then we come over to here and we take a look. There is Alita Battle Angel playing on the TV out here. And we've got uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter playing there. Um, and right there is, um, let, me, let me mute this. And right there is our CPU usage. Oops. Where there it is. Uh, our RAM usage um, and our network bandwidth. All of these are playing just fine. In fact, if we come up here and take a look at Alita Battle Angel, you can see uh, we've we've dropped two frames total, uh, and that's when I started the video. Um, and this this just looks amazing. Uh, I'm actually running three streams simultaneously on the TerraMaster. So I was able to play all three of those video streams flawlessly across my network uh, with no stuttering, no hiccups, no no lagging, not that everything worked perfectly. And uh, there's a little, uh, a little thing I threw into the mix there to make it even more complicated that I didn't mention. And that is that here we've got, uh, if we take a look at this file manager, we can see that I've got uh, this Synology thing in here. We've got, you know, Docker and movies and, and whatnot, but I, I remote mounted this Synology um, folder here with my movie and TV collection. So the videos that we were just watching on Plex in three locations weren't actually, those video files were not located on this device. They were actually mapped from the Synology to the TerraMaster and then streamed across my network from there. So even with a couple of hops across the network to get from point A to point C, everything just worked flawlessly. Now, if we come over here to the to the dashboard again, and we look at our applications, and we go to our installed, you can see that I've got Docker, Plex, and MB installed here. Now, here's the thing. As I mentioned before, this is a two core processor. So um, this is this is kind of one of those things that I think you're gonna have to kind of pick and choose. Do you want, um, do you want this to be a Docker server? Do you want this to be a, a media server? you're not gonna be able to do virtual machines with this because it's two cores uh, and it's only, I've only been able to get 10 gigs to work. I've never tried anything more than that. Um, but 10 seems to be, the 10 gigs of RAM kind of seems to be the maximum threshold that I've seen as far as people uh, having success with uh, with this device online. So you're gonna have two cores and up to 10 gigs of RAM. Um, not gonna be much of a powerhouse as far as running virtual machines. And and you could probably run a few simple Docker containers, you know, like AdGuard Home or PyHole or, you know, little little simple things like that. Um, so I would be, I would be, I'd be hesitant to say that this is going to be a good, um, you know, like, Proxmox server or or Docker server. Like you're gonna have to kind of pick and choose what you do with this because you're limited to two cores and 10 gigs of RAM. However, if you want a good, solid, surprisingly uh, well-performing media server, um, with all of your all of your storage attached directly to it, uh, and I think it only pulls 65 watts or something. Let me verify that. Um, to do Oh yeah, so it's got a 90 watt power supply. Um, I've had laptops with bigger power supplies than that. Um, so if you're looking for a low powered, super efficient uh, home media server, uh, the Terra Master F5221 uh, is definitely worth a look. I'll have links to everything in the description down below. Um, I believe uh, the last time I looked, you could pick one of these up for like 349. Um, you can pick up, you know, eight gigs of RAM for 20 or 30 bucks. Um, and then of course, throw your drives in there. You can do uh, all kinds of different stuff here. Let me, here we go. Uh, so you can, uh, you can do RAID 1, 5, 6, or 10. Um, you can, so basically you've got some different options here. Again, this this will be linked in the description as well, so you can kind of get an idea if this will be a good fit for you. It's got uh, support for, you know, just single drives. Uh, you can do a JBOD, uh, you know, just a bunch of drives, uh, however you want to do that. Um, there was something I wanted to look for here. Oh, here we go. I wanted to know, so here we go. We wanted to look at the file systems. Uh, it'll do EXT4 or BTRFS. Uh, for the internal drives, for external drives, it will support. Uh, so basically this is what it will do with what you put with the drive 
drives you put in it. Uh, this next line, this external drives, that's it's got USB ports. If you wanted to plug an external drive into it, it'll support EXT3, EXT4, NTFS, FAT32, and HFS+. Plus. So it's got a good compatibility list for uh, plugging external drives into it as well. So um, let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to know about this device. I, I Again, I'm shocked at how well this thing handles video. Um, this may actually replace uh, the MB server that I've got running over here that you can't see, uh, but it's, you know, it's got, um, it's got an AMD FX 8350. Uh, that gives you an idea of how old that processor is, along with a GTX 772 gig card and 16 gigs of RAM that pulls like 150 watts. Like that system idling pulls like 150 watts. So uh, I may I may actually decommission that server uh, for the TerraMaster F5 221 uh, just to save a couple of bucks a month on my power bill. But again, if you guys are interested in more information about this, you'd like to see me do anything special with it, um, I'm actually thinking about doing at least a couple of videos, putting new, uh, entirely new operating systems on it because why not, right? If you'd like to see me install something like Open Media Vault 6 or 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 something else, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to take a look at that, make a couple of videos. I have some fun with it. Figure why not, right? So um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm rambling now, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys hanging out for, for just a few minutes of your day and uh, spending some time with me. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.